Yo, what's good guys? This is Nightwing2303 from Weartesters.com and today we finally have the performance review on the Nike KD8. So with that being said, let's go ahead and get right into it. So how do you top the KD7's traction? Simply put, this is how. So as you can see, it's a modified herringbone traction pattern. It's kind of digitized, so it's all over the place. And if you want to get a real close up in there, you can see that there are just a bunch of little nubs and this stuff works amazingly well. They pretty much played great on every single surface or floor that I played on. The only exception would be the very last time that I took them out on court and that was because the 24 hour that I went to their floor was just disgusting. It still has some nastiness from whatever was on there but even with all this kind of crap that was all over the floor these guys still held together for the most part. There was some wiping needed you know every so often periodically which is normal but I maintained great coverage throughout more often than not so at the end of the day there's really nothing to complain about now the only reason why these guys aren't getting that wear testers Hall of Fame badge is basically because some of the rubber is already frayed off and this is happening on both shoes but because of that they're not getting the highest rating just because I don't know what their durability is gonna be like especially if you go and run with these you know outdoors but the one thing that is certain is that while these things do last you're gonna receive some really awesome grip now the cushion featured here is full length zoom which you can actually see it's visible and then it's also completely articulated both in the forefoot and some sections off in the heel. Now back when I was re reviewing the LeBron 10 I actually designed something very similar to this. I'll put a picture of it right over here and I had posted that picture on my website. At the time it was called kicksoncourt.com but now it's obviously wear testers and as you can see I don't know if they borrowed the design or if, you know great minds just think alike but they basically mimicked what I had thought, but they put it into use. The only difference is that they reversed the two sections of articulation. So my articulation was on this side, whereas this is, theirs is on this side. Now in terms of how it feels, that's kind of the downside. You can't really feel much of anything except for right in this section. This part feels amazing. It's very springy and explosive or responsive the way that you would expect Zoom Air to be, especially in full length form. But the rest of it, not because it's so minimal, but because it's so structured on the exterior sections, it's just really hard to feel. What I mean by that is that right here, there is a bumper, which basically makes this unable to compress. You have another one right here. And then these two points right here, instead of having pillars like the 360 zoom would have, they have little pieces of plastic in there. So there's no compression whatsoever. So I don't know how well you're gonna be able to see that, but they basically glued these little rectangle pieces of plastic right here so that this stuff doesn't fold while you're moving and then collapse on you, resulting in some instability. Now it still is full length cushion, so you are still being covered as far as impact protection goes, especially since it is bottom loaded. Now what they should have done is put this inside the shoe, still kept all the articulation points, that way it retains all of its flexibility. But by being within the shoe, they wouldn't need all these little compression bumpers to make sure that it's not compressing and, and basically making you tip over, because it would be within the shoe and it would be resting directly underneath your foot. That way you're feeling all of the articulation, you're feeling all the zoom, and it's embedded so there's no instability issues whatsoever. That's just what I would have done. Maybe they had their reasons for not doing that but for whatever reason it just kind of is a little bit lackluster if you played in full length zoom setups before. Again except for this section right here this part right here is awesome. Materials is what Nike calls flyweave basically that is a renamed version of performance woven upper that we saw debut on the Air Jordan 29 and this stuff is awesome. I love it. It doesn't feel quite as thick as the Air Jordan 29 but it still performs exactly in the same way if anything being a little bit more on the thinner side allows it to really kind of grasp and hold your foot the way that it was meant to whereas the 29 felt like it was kind of a sock and this one just kind of feels like it's on top of your foot and that's pretty much it now the only real drawback to having a performance woven upper is basically durability it's just not as durable as plastics or fuses but if you want something that is very quick to break in really feels like it's a part of your foot instead of you know on top of your foot then performance woven or mesh or something similar is something that you're going to be interested in. As far as their fit, personally I think that's a little tricky. I actually had to go up half a size. I personally would recommend that you try these things on for yourself because the, the fit, like I said, it, it's kind of it's wishy-washy. So I could have gone with a size 9 but they were really, really, really tight and a size nine and a half just fits perfectly. And you'll notice if you've worn the KD5 before that these are very similar in feeling when you first put them on because the tongue right here is actually attached to the upper, which is pretty much exactly what the KD5 did. And so when you try them on, this whole section right here is gonna be super tight on your foot. It's gonna feel like it's pinching a little bit, but luckily because this is a performance woven upper instead of a plastic fuse upper, this breaks in in no time, so that issue becomes a non-issue 
fairly quickly. Lockdown is actually a really nice feature in the shoe. The lockdown in the forefoot was great. That forefoot fits super snug, but it contains your foot perfectly. And then the flywire cables here, while you might think they don't do anything, they actually keep your foot on the footbed and they also relieve some of the pressure or tension that the woven upper would be receiving. So these are taking a brunt of the load. So I think these two combinations work really well together. And then the heel lockdown was great. The back of the shoe is extremely sculpted. It feels awesome. And then inside the shoe, you have a built-in TPU heel counter. So you're perfectly structured right here in the back. And despite how it looks, these two little saber tooth teeth things do absolutely nothing for support. I initially thought just based off the of looks that it was supposed to cage you in from side to side, but the TPU cage actually wraps right around to here. So this is just for design purposes. Very similarly to the Zoom Soldier 9, their support features are pretty much all over this shoe. First and foremost is that form fitting upper. The more material, the more natural your foot and the shoe becomes, damn it. The more natural your foot and the shoe adheres to one another, the better the support will be. And then there's this huge platform that the shoe is built on. The zoom is super wide and very flat. So instability from this end is pretty much a non-issue. And then any potential instability issues that the zoom air might've been since it's been exposed is canceled out by all of the support features that I already discussed, which were these two bumpers as well as these two plastic pieces. And then of course you have that heel counter, which adds additional structure and support as well. It does a great job of that. Now, the one thing that I disliked about the shoe, this is not actually a support feature, but it ties into support since it's right here in the back is this super exaggerated heel I wasn't a huge fan of. I thought it was initially going to limit transition, kind of feel clunky. It actually did not do that, but what it did do is allowed a lot, a lot of people to just kind of step on my feet and it literally took my shoe off. So overall, really enjoyed this shoe on court. They have some beastly traction, full length cushion, and a performance woven upper that's to die for. I wouldn't really die for it, but it's just awesome to play and I just love how this stuff feels. So as long as you get the shoe that properly fits you well, again, trying them on is probably the best option for that, then you'll probably enjoy these just as much as I did. For me personally, I think that the KD8 is up there with the KD5 and the KD7 as some of the best performing models in the line. And I'm really hoping that they just kind of continue to push the envelope each year, especially since we are seeing a price increase. At least we're getting, you know, innovation along with that. Thank you guys for watching. Thanks for all your support. Hopefully this performance review helped you out a little bit. And if you own a pair of KD8s and you've been playing in them, comment below and let me know what you guys think about them. So until next time guys, have a good one.